All right, for our next activity, uh, it's actually, it could be a variety of activities, but it involves um, the Connect sets. Now, if you haven't used these before, Connects is a, a wide variety of uh, it's a system, kind of like Legos, that you can use to build a, um, a bunch of different uh, things, vehicles in this case, to get your kids to use in terms of force and motion. The nice thing about the Connects is that they give students a choice. And so when you use them, if you introduce them with a particular build, for instance, uh, you might build that first one or show the kids how to build it. And then, then let them have at it in terms of saying, you can see how this works here. This is some basic guidelines, uh, some tips for making sure it's effective. Then let them go at it and say, Okay, so we need to build some things, and this is a, a good tool to use when you say to the kids, solve this problem, this engineering problem, and then see what kind of creativity they bring to it, um, while you support and uh, suggest, as opposed to uh, explain and give away all the answers. Um, this is the Connects Kit. Uh, this is, uh, unfortunately, kind of a, a little bit like a potato chip bag, in the sense that it's a nice big container, and um, inside is not whole lot of uh, connects. And the good news is that as you add more connects materials to your classroom setting, uh, so donors choose to be a great place to go for this, is that you can then build up without having to get more and more containers because you probably have enough of those in your classroom. There is an instruction book that comes with it uh, with a wide variety of things in there in terms of kids. Uh, obviously kids can build. Uh, we're mostly looking for vehicles in this case in terms of force and motion. Uh, so for instance, I built a, a simple vehicle here. Um, mine happens to be rubber band powered. Theirs uh, can just be a straight vehicle and you can still do a variety of things with it. Um, so for instance, when you uh, use a rubber band to power the vehicle, the key is to have a couple things. One, uh, we want to use some washers, some small thin uh, bits of plastic to go between the wheels and anything that they might touch you don't want them to have any excess friction in the system. So you want this, the wheels to spin freely. Uh, the second thing is uh, you want one axle to spin freely, okay? So on your car, for instance, this would be, if your car's front wheel drive, the back wheels just spin. There's no power that goes to them. So they're not locked into any transmission system. They're just sitting there spinning. And that's what you want, one set of wheels. They either want to spin all by themselves independent of the axle. The second set you want connected to the axle. And so there's a special piece that, um, uh, so it sits like this and there's a part that sticks out and then the spokes of the wheels will catch that part. And then as it rotates, it will rotate the wheel. And that's what we're gonna wrap, wrap a rubber band around. The other thing that you need to think about uh, and have your kids think about, again, this is a great opportunity for your kids to solve these problems instead of you having to solve the problems, is that the, structure of the car has to be sound enough so that it's not going to torque too much under pressure or just completely fall apart. Um, in this case, I've got two rubber bands attached to the free uh, axle, and I am going to attach them to the second axle. I put one piece in there, so it's basically the axle's uh, a round tube like this, and then I've got one piece sticking up like this, and this is where I'm going to catch that uh, rubber band. So I've got one piece that sticks out of the axle like this. I'm going to clip the rubber band onto it and then I'm going to turn it and then I'll capture the rubber band and give it some power, some torque. So I'm going to, this is uh, potential energy here. So it's not actually moving yet, but I'm adding some tension to this by turning the wheels. And so the rubber band in between here, in between the first axle and the second axle, is getting tighter and tighter. And the more I roll the wheels, the tighter I get, the more force I should be able to get off of this. And so as I let go of the wheels, I can get some spin off of it, and that's going to propel my car back and forth. I will tell you, it is not the simplest thing to get to work consistently uh, for the kids. And in fact, if they roll, if they try to rub, uh, uh, wrap off the rubber band too tightly, a couple things they'll find out. One, you'll get so much rubber band wrapped around the axle, it'll actually bind up and the car will just sit there. The second thing is the rubber bands can actually break if they add too much tension to it. So they're going to want to find a sweet spot. This is not a bad thing. This is your kids having to solve a problem. You don't want to give them an easy problem to solve. You want to give them a challenging, interesting problem to solve. The other thing you can do, of course, is decide, you know, we're not going to use rubber bands and they're going to either push this, or they can apply force themselves 
before they can uh, you know, roll it down the ramp, for instance. Um, you can also have them uh, you can say, okay, I want you to move this without any force uh, from you and without using the ramp. And so, of course, they'll stare at it for a while and they'll be thinking about how to do this. Um, and you know, your nudge to them would be, well, what other kinds of forces could you use that don't touch this, for instance? So that might be anything from, um, you, know, you could theoretically use magnets to it, attach a magnet to it, and pull it along or push it through uh, oppositional magnet forces. Or you can put a index card up on the top. Um, they have some longer pieces, for instance, and so you can put an index card and put it up on top and they can use a fan or a hair dryer um, to uh, push this um, down a given distance without having to touch it. And then usually that's the, the way it goes. It's, Travel the distance of the desk, for instance, without touching it um, is one way to go. And that way you can kind of, they can try different things. And the result would be that whether or not um, the variety of things came about and, and who was successful. When you have kids do engineering practice, one of the things you want to do is make sure that, if possible, that everyone is successful if they're working at it. So one thing to do um, is to have incorporate something called uh, iteration, and that is repeating the process uh, and making improvements. So you can have six different groups, for instance, all make up their own things, um, and then they can compare notes. Oh, what worked well? Oh, we put some washers in between the wheel and the rest of the vehicle. That made them spin more freely. Well, we used a bigger sail. Well, that's bigger sail worked fine. And then you put the groups back into their own groups and separate them back into the same groups. And then they can use each other's ideas to make improvements on their model, uh, still having conversations about what they want to do, how they want to do it, build it, and then come back a second time and see, okay, did everyone improve? If everyone improved, they've done the right thing, even if they didn't you know, win necessarily. Typically, you want it to go not who's the fastest or who's the best, but who's showing the greatest improvement um, on this process. And maybe even, uh, especially if you can do, if you do peer checks for the groups, which group did the best job of either explaining their process or selling their options in terms of convincing others to try the options that they did um, as a way of explaining how this communication works within the sciences. So connects, uh, you get about 400 pieces or so in this kit. Uh, there are a variety of sizes. One kit per table works out well because then they can build a vehicle for all that. And then um, this works really well too, especially if you want to do it beforehand give them the kits and just let them explore with it in your recess, uh, rotational uh, uh, groupings, for instance, uh, where you say build something out of this materials, not related to your particular science unit, but give them experience hands-on before you get to the unit so that when they're building this, they have more confidence and it's less frustrating for you and for them. Thank you.